Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 169 of the show. I'm Roman Mejia, I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And this week I have uh, four new Lit RPG titles for you folks. Before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out to our newest Patreon supporter, Chris. That's all I know. It's just the name Chris there, no last name. Um, so uh, who's he or she uh, has become a, a recent patron supporter. Just want to give a quick shout out of thanks to the person to help cover the cost of the show, uh, keeping it free and keeping for everyone free to listen to and to watch. Uh, so thank you very much. And of course, if you want to become a patron of the podcast, you can do so at uh, patreon.com slash Geekbytes podcast. I know it's it's not Little Bitty Podcast. It's the first podcast we did. And so that's the one with the title there. So there you go. Okay. Um, on to new releases and reviews, though. Uh, we have four new reviews for you, including The Mountain Valley War, Second Dive Concludes, World Tree Online. That's actually the third book in that series. I know it's confusing. Um, but the first book was Second Dive, I think, starts or initiates. So Second Dive Concludes is the third book. So there you go. Uh, also, I'm uh, going to be reviewing the latest book for Sh- uh, Shimer uh, Kuznets called Earth Force. Well, I like to legacy book number one. You might actually recognize that author from the Life Reset series. This is his new um, sci-fi-ish little RPG series. We'll talk about, of course, um, how that went. Uh, but I'm also reviewing this week Harem Trash, a little RPG satire. Uh, this one was actually recommended to me by... Um, Lavelle from the Lit to Reroll podcast, who who does them online. So we'll, you know, talk about that one as well. And last but not least, it'll be Galactic Fist of Legend, book number four, uh, Life Works by Scotty Fooch. And I'll let you know uh, about that one. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to, of course, Lit RPG News. And in Lunar PD News, we're going to begin with the first story on the Here Now Festival. Uh, the Here Now Festival is set in Kansas City for June the 6th to the 9th in 2018. Um, it's a convention that focuses on audio stuff like audiobook narration, um, audiobooks, music, and podcast. Um, and this year, there is actually going to be a Game Lit Awards category under the audiobook section. And, I, and lo and behold, I just heard about this recently, um, one of our favorite authors, Dakota Crowd, will be apparently presenting the award for the Game Lit category. So, hey. Um, also, though, there's going to be a Game Lit Little RPG panel uh, moderated by me. Um, and there's going to be a, a, some very well-known Little RPG authors, including uh, Charles Dean and Dave Wilmoth, also on the panel. And some very good narrators who are in the genre and who are major figures here, including Jeff Hayes, Justin Thomas James, Annie Ellicott, and Andrea Parsnow. Um, there are going to be some other folks there who are in the community, whether authors or readers, so feel free to hang out. I know um, Don Chapman has said this publicly, so I think it's okay to say she's actually going to be flying in from, um, I think, London or at least England, <laughs> to, uh, to be at the convention because she's nominated for one of the awards, as are actually many of the other people on that panel. Um, but she's coming as, as, as an award nominee, of course, to hang out, and I'm looking forward to seeing her finally, getting a chance to meet her. Um, so lots of great folks. Gonna be there. So if you happen to have a team in the area, has time to stop on by. Um, I'll probably be posting videos on the podcast about um, where we're at, where we're hanging out at, so feel free to come out and say hello and everything. Um, also, let's see, in other Little BG news, we have uh, Dave Wilmars, um, Wine and Listener um, who is the author of Dave, uh, not Dave Wilmars, um, I mean Carlson, rather, um, he has a book called The uh, Curse of Frillick Ridge, the first book in that series got a commercial that was put on ESPN, I think it was, it was heavily inspired, I think, by what Dave Wilmart did, which was kind of do the same thing, he got made a commercial, uh, put it on ESPN for the same spot, I think, you know, like the uh, pizza um, competition making wars on that channel. Um, uh, so this one was actually made by Emily uh, Rennie, who is the audiobook narrator for Emmett Carlson's Curse of Relic Rage. And I'm actually playing it now if you're watching the video version of the podcast. I'm just a background voice, apparently, with a video here. Uh, but it's a very interesting video um, as, as a promotional work for it. It looks, it heavily uses um, stock footage for fantasy, short stuff, um, some different icons, and there are like little like snippets of. Um, text from the book and and reader recommendations and reader reviews and of course you actually hear Annalise speaking towards the end of it here sort of maybe depending on the audio quality of what I captured uh, but it's a cute it's a cute little commercial so it's always fun to see um, 
you know, promotional things for the genre because the more people know about it, the more people it helps benefit everybody. And so that's definitely a segment of the population where like, oh, you wouldn't necessarily expect to see promotional stuff for a little RPG, which is mainly ebooks and audiobook kind of stuff for video games. Um, but it's always fun to see it there. We're actually building in the show notes um, for that ESPN um, pizza competition thing. Um, and it starts playing at about the one hour, 53 minute and about three second ish mark. If you want to check it out for yourself, of course. Okay, uh, in other literary news, we have uh, Dakota Crow, author of the Divine Dungeon series and the Completionist Chronicles, and of course, the head of Mountain Dope Press. He did a live stream this past week, and he actually made some really interesting announcements. Uh, he also did a Q&A, so definitely go check out the whole thing, uh, especially if you're a fan. It's really fun to always see him talk. I couldn't catch it live, unfortunately, but um, it's really fun to always see uh, a guy who's, I think, considered my friend, and but also is a great storyteller and writer, and uh, now a, an indie publisher. Uh, but on to the, some of the bigger announcements from that particular live stream include uh, The Divine Dungeon, book number five, called Dungeon Eternium. Well, I should be out at the end of May. May 31st, apparently. Um, I don't think there's a pre-order link up yet, but uh, Dakota said that's when it's coming out, so that's when it's coming out. Uh, he also announced that the entire Dungeon uh, Divine Dungeon series is getting new cover art, and that's not just for the ebooks, but also for the audiobooks. That way they'll be matching at this point. Um, and there's going to be new structural editing, better grammar, better punctuation, because remember when he started writing that series, he was just doing it by himself. I think uh, his wife was editing, uh, and, and so as it went on, as he got more popular, um, he could just start devoting more resources up until the point where he started a whole indie publishing company. Um, and he also talks about that as well, about referring to like, oh, re re-releasing like better edited versions with better cover art. Um, that makes a lot of sense as from a business standpoint because people see cover art and they make a very quick judgment. And as popular as this novel has been within our community, um, it might not have had a wide, as wide of a, a reach as ebook as it possibly could because the cover art, you know, is doesn't always tell the best story for some people. Because like, not as eye catching as it possibly could. And so we actually revealed the first new cover art for the book. Um, so if you're watching the video version of the podcast, video version, I should say, of the podcast, um, you can see the new cover art for the Divine Dungeon series, book number one. It has um, a main character, it's very action oriented, it's color. Um, that was always a thing for, for some people that the original cover art for the series was always black and white and a little abstract. Um, but this here, I think definitely has more mass appeal. I don't, I don't like it quite as much just because the original cover art said more about the dungeon portion of the story, but I understand that this cover art is definitely more mass appeal. It shows, um, more action, more of a fantasy, you know, vibe pull for, for the mainstream audience. So, um, in addition to that, Dakota also mentioned that there's going to be a Divine Ninja anthology um, that was going to be a bunch of essentially short stories collected from um, from individual writers. There was a contest recently, um, like in the past, uh, for from from Mountain Dew Press to collect short stories, and the anthology is going to be coming out soon. But bigger than that, though, just like I thought, um, and as I hypothesized, it actually was a kind of a uh, I'm gonna say cattle call and audition for uh, expanded universe stories set in the Divine Dead universe, which means essentially there are gonna be new books um, co written by these different authors, co-written with the Dakota Kraut, um, that are set in the Divine Dungeon universe. So you're going to get new stories, new characters, new places around the world, um, but it's still going to be set in that same Divine Dungeon universe with all those cultivation rules, um, perhaps some different um, expanded mechanics as, 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 as the different places of the world develop their own things potentially, but it'll still be set in there and you might get some cameos from different characters. Um, so fun stuff. It's kind of the same thing that um, Shadow Alley Press did, with the Viridian Gate online series and that they, they have their main series and they have like other series, some other main secondary characters that do their own things. Um, but they're written by other authors. And so there may or may not be things that you like there or not, uh, just kind of depends, but it, it's always good to get more dungeon dungeon novels stuff for, for me. I'm a big fan. Okay. And that's the end of little RPG news on to stuff that is out now. These are stories that have come out recently, haven't had a chance to read them, but they are out. If you're interested in some, are gonna, some of them are going to be from series that you know and love. Um, this might include Limitless Lands, book number three. It is out now for you. It's titled Retribution. Also out now is the second book in the Rise to Omniscience book series uh, called Starbreak. The third book in the New Game Minus series, this is actually a personal favorite of mine, um, Breaking Rules, written by Sarah Lynn, a little bit adventure, New Game Minus book number three. Um, it's a really, I think it's an underrated series. Um, 
very good writing and very interesting storytelling for me, at least. I'm looking forward to reading book three. Um, also out now, though, is Redath, book number one, Raven, a little bit series. Uh, sci-fi little bit series, I should say. And also it is the fourth book in the King in the uh, Station Core series by Jonathan Brooks called Kingdom The Kingdom Rises, a Dungeon Core epic. Also out is uh, a new book from Chris Snee called Tower of Soul, a game lit novella. So all kinds of interesting things. Uh, also it is Spy Reborn, a lit, lit RPG adventure, actors method book number one. So there it is. Um, and the fourth book in the in the in the Camelot Little RPG series called Camelot Resurgent, an Arthurian Little RPG, uh, Camelot Little RPG book number four is also out by Galen Wolf, and Microchasm book number one Sanctum is out. Um, don't let the cover for you. Um, I looked inside. I haven't read it obviously, but I looked inside. It's definitely RPG. This last one is so we'll have to see what that actually turns out to be now. Okay, uh, on to new Little Bitty audiobooks. We only have a couple this week, and that includes The Final Trial, Level Up Book Number 3 by Dan Sergunov, um, is out as an audiobook, as is The Path of the Necromancer, Book 1, a loot RPG series um, by Deck Davis and Matthew Broadhead. Uh, so that is out as an audiobook as well, as is Zachariah Dracolis' uh, The Galactic Badlands, that is out as an audiobook. And the eighth book in the Realm of Archon series is out as well. That's the Black Flame of the Baron Step, um, the eighth book in the Realm of Archon. So there we go. And on to upcoming Lit RPG. This is just where I read up a bunch of stuff that I know that's out. Um, there's not actually anything new to this list this week, unfortunately. Um, so you feel free to skip ahead if you already know what's coming out, but I'll read it off anyways in case people want to know. Uh, that includes on May the 7th, it'll be the Azure Dragon, a fa heroic fantasy saga, the Artar, Artar Chronicles book number four, um, book number three, sorry. Um, on May the 14th, it'll be Monster, a little bit of series, The Beetle, the fifth book in the Guardians of the Round Table series will be out on May the 18th. The fourth book in the Reality Bender series called Web of Worlds will be out on May the 20th. The second book in the Alfram Chronicles, uh, Scurfier, will be out on May 21st. Uh, the second book in the, called The Realm of Noria, Little Beach series book number two of The Life, will be out on June the 1st. The third book in the Alchemic Online Chronicle series will be out on June the 1st as well. That one is entitled Kingdom Come, a lit RPG dragon rider adventure written by uh, James Osiris Baldwin. Um, the second book in the Discardium series, we actually reviewed the first book not too long ago. Enjoyable. Definitely a little bit different from the from the same author's Russian translation. Um, I liked it though. The second book is out on June the 10th called Apostle of the Sleeping Gods, Discardium book number two. Uh, the sixth book in the Good Guy series, um, always a favorite for me, Home Siege Home will be out on June the 13th. The second book in the Champions is Playing series called Code Hero will be out on June the 15th. The second book in the Adam Online series will be out on June the 20th. The third book in the Din Gin Tamer series will be out. It'll be out on June the 20th. It'll be called uh, Gin Tamer Evolution. And on June 25th, it'll be Shift book number two, Stealth Caster. And last but not least, July 18th, it'll be the Time Master into World Network book number one, Lit RPG series. Know nothing about this last one, um, but it says it's Lit RPG, and so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Okay, uh, on to new releases and reviews. Okay. First up is the Mountain Valley War, Second Die Concludes, World Tree Online, written by M.A. Carlson. Uh, this is 670 pages, $5.99, and it is available on Kindle Limited. Um, here is the author's description. Thrown into a conflict beyond the scope of anything Bye Bye ever imagined, he will be tested in ways he never imagined. Whether that means stopping a war or just taking the girl he likes on a date, he certainly has his work cut out for him. Tensions are rising, and if Bye Bye and his friends can't put a stop to a brewing war, Antivillain and Hammerstein might just destroy each other. That is, if the other adventurers don't destroy them first. With the ad socked against them, will Bye Bye and his friends survive the Mountain Valley War, or will the flames of war consume them, leaving nothing but ash in their wakes? Uh, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, and 
on to the review. Basically, this is this is a big novel. This is really quite massive. It uh, over 600 pages. Amazon is counting at 670. I think it actually might be bigger than that. Um, but it's a very reasonable price to find tonight at this point, and it's also in Kindle Unlimited. So great value buy for me at least. Um, and as far as the storytelling goes, very solid stuff here. Um, it it keeps like you're either a, by, by book three at this point, you're either a fan of the series or you're not. Um, it keeps the things you liked about books one and two, and it really kind of expands a lot. Like this, like I said, this is a big, big story. Um, there's really solid storytelling. You have that same likable group of characters. And I think that's probably the biggest draw for me, at least, uh, is, is that each one of those core members of the group is interesting in a, in a larger book like this. You actually get a little more time to spend with them individually. You get, um some very good um, social quests or some some quests that are just about them individually instead of like, oh, the big, necessarily like big plot line. Um, there are still plenty of action. The events of book two um, are expanded upon here. I'm not going to say what those are. I don't want to spoil things for anybody who hasn't read the series yet, um, but there's a really good satisfying conclusion at the end. I can, I can tell you that. Um, there is a bit of a cliffhanger I should worry about, but it doesn't affect the novel's resolution necessarily as much as it's teasing you for the next book. So I'm okay with that. Overall, again, book three gives you all this stuff you like. Um, a very likable group, lots of good banter, good action adventure stuff. Um, this is, again, one of the more crunchy lit RPG series out there. Uh, tons of information about stats and magic and ability descriptions. Lots of numbers. So if you're into that, this is this is the get something that the whole series is definitely something right up your alley. I think the training scenes are again also something that's a recurring um, thing that happens in those stories. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that personally because I love training scenes where like you see your main character. I'm always a big fan of like those Dragon Ball Z series where like, oh, you main character gets in a fight and he might win or lose, but there's always a training scene to make him more powerful. And I'm always like super fascinated by that concept just because you get a little more insight into actual, like how the main character is getting better into like some weird um, montage cutscene or like just like skipping it entirely. And like the main character is just powerful suddenly, you know, a series like this actually goes into like some really good detail about what the characters are doing to, to become more powerful. And, I, and it's describing like that power progression arc. Um, and that's always been a, a thing that I've enjoyed about this series. Um, some people may not like that as much though. Uh, and, and again, because this is a longer series, a longer book, I should say, um, you get more of those training scenes. And so if that's some people I can, I can definitely see them, I get a little tired of them. Uh, but for me, I always enjoy them. I especially like the ones in like the puzzle room simulation room. It always gave me like a big holodeck vibes thing uh, thing there, which I always enjoyed. Um, the action is well written in the story, but again, I found the most memorable moments in the story weren't necessarily the action stuff. Like they definitely moved the plot forward and they're really entertaining. Um, but I like the interpersonal stuff that gave secondary characters um, interesting stories. Stuff like um, uh, the the fairy babies gamer fiance that storyline is finally actually flushed out. Um, the shaman's totems. There's a whole thing there. Uh, the relation between the main character and Rose for the romance aspect, which is again hinted at in the, in the novel description. I think I like those little moments the best just because they're giving me more stuff about the characters I actually remember and, uh, and care about. Uh, and I think that helps, you know, solidify those characters as being interesting individuals and not just like, Oh, that's just the DPS guy. It doesn't really matter what he does. Like, no, no, he's, he's, these characters are getting fully flushed out backgrounds and stories of their own in addition to like the main series big overarching plot and for me those little moments were are very memorable because those are the things i kind of rely on to carry me through and to, to keep caring about the story in general it's not not the adventure necessarily i mean that's good and everything but it's always the characters that i usually fall in love with or don't um so for me i thought this was a very entertaining story again a very interesting Good quests, good RPG progression. The last 25% in particular did a really good job of bringing together the big plot lines to a satisfying conclusion. Even there's a little wand waviness there. I'll, I'll put it there. I'll, I'll say it. Um, but again, still entertaining. I had a good time with it. Gets a score of 7.5 out of 10. That's the Mountain Valley War. Second dive concludes World Tree Online with a score of 7.5 out of 10. And next we have Earth Force. Uh, Relict Legacy Book Number One by Shimer Kuznets. Uh, it is uh, 412 pages, four dollars ninety nine cents. It is not available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. On the first day, a mist descended from the heavens, blanketing Earth. On the second day, a cryptic message: Infusion commencing. 
appeared in the corner of everyone's eyes. On the third day, the sick were healed and the crippled walked again. On the fourth day, celebration and joy spread across the globe. And on the fifth day, the warping began. There was no warning. A mist descended from the sky, disabling all technology and causing a weird message to appear in the corner of everyone's eyes. The situation grew even worse as animals and people started to warp, transforming into terrible monsters that prey on the living. Within months, human civilization had crumbled. Unable to fight the seemingly indestructible beast, the survivals are reduced to cowering in reinforced shelters, waiting for the end to come. Helpless. All seemed lost until a few brave souls discovered a secret of their new reality, the tech, and how to use it to level up. Together, they represent humanity's last best hope for salvation, but they must first find the answers to the mystery of their new existence. Their journey will require them to quickly adapt to alien technology, operate strange spaceships, and even befriend an extraterrestrial merchant with an inferiority complex. So there you go. It's actually a really good description of the series. Um, when I first started it, it, it kind of starts off um, as an RPG apocalypse story, but it's not quite. Um, it's more of a slice of life, sci-fi alien tech adventure set against an RPG cataclysm. I mean, that's a, it's even a long description. I feel like it's fairly accurate. Uh, the story isn't quite an RPG apocalypse story because there's a lack of survival of stuff and any real apocalypse like tension. Um, but it's kind of a close cousin. Um, the story starts off several months after the RPG apocalypse. So like you didn't get that first like mass history kind of thing going on. Um, it starts off several months after that when all, after all the world's tech has failed, everyone already has their RPG interfaces and levels. Um, and 10% of all life on Earth has mutated into monsters. People have already figured out how to kind of survive and a few of the new rules and how to build safe areas. Um, and then the twist in the story occurs. And I don't think this is a, a, a spoiler because it's on the cover and it's actually in the novel description. Um, in that the three humans um, find a crashed alien ship and they get to boost their tech and RPG powers. And most of the story is essentially them figuring out how to use the system, how to gain an advantage to start to stay back, take back parts of Earth from the tech-infused monsters and the gang of the power-hungry humans, and just learning about why this cataclysm happened and how they can help humanity survive. And that's kind of what the story is. It focuses a little more on... Um, it leans more towards like the sci-fi action concept with a little lighter on the RPG mechanics than like the other uh, the author's other series, which is Life Reset, which is super popular. Also send a VR MMORPG, so it makes sense that this one is a little bit lighter. Um, this story is a RPG, though. It has levels, it has stats, it has classes, notifications, RPG progression. It is in there, um, but a lot of the story deals more with the Earth being bombarded by this alien tech, the unintended consequences to that whole thing happening, and how the main characters learn about that technology and master it to help mankind. Um, it's a little more... I want to say it's more action focused because it is more exploration focused, I should say. Um, but there is action scenes in here, so don't worry about that. Um, overall, though, the story is a little more slice of life, and that's okay. Um, there's good fights, there's good, reasonable RPG progression, but it, again, it leans more heavily towards interesting alien sci fi exploration and tech, and like the literally get in a spaceship at one point and start exploring some things. And, and so it's a little more sci-fi oriented. Um, and if you're in the mood for that, I think you're really gonna like this. Um, but just be aware that that's where this kind of leans a little more towards. For me, I had a good time with it. I actually enjoy sci-fi stories. I like alien stuff. Um, this reminds me of another series that can't, can't think of the name of it. I feel like it's Star or something. Where like you get nanotech, I mean, this is a different series, but it, it's the same kind of concept. Like, oh, but this is a little more geared towards understanding alien technology and exploiting it and, and learning about it and, and embracing that concept and seeing how you can adapt to it and use it to help mankind. And that, and that a lot of the stories that that thought exploration and that technology exploration with like some, you know, decent character development, some good action adventure stuff. Um, and so for me, I had a good time with it. Get the score seven point four to 10 for me. Good. I'm not quite, I like life reset a little bit better to be honest. Um, but this isn't a bad story. It's still very entertaining. It's just a little bit different, and that's okay. Uh, so for me, score is 7.4 out of 10. That's Earth Force Relict Legacy Book Number 1, uh, with a score of 7.4 out of 10. And next we have Harem Trash, a lit RPG satire, um, written by Ray Nantes. It is 102 pages, 99 cents. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. Ib me is me. Enjoyed his life as an overpowered paladin, try hard, filled to the brim with beautiful women who loved him unconditionally for all the wrong reasons. Like, that's what it says. 
Everything was going great until we tried to woo the wrong one and was polymorphed into a literal trash can. Starting back at level one, he must find some way to regain his power and hopefully return to his real body. He soon finds that his new life won't be easy and he embarks on a fantastic fantasy adventure that's not so bad. It's good. Terrible. So there you go. That's what the that's the author's novel description. Um, and honestly, there is a harem aspect to the story at the very beginning of the novel. Um, but don't let that dissuade you. I'm honestly, I personally had to push past it because it's not my it's not my thing. Really um, but it's mostly parody, um, and it's it's completely finished by the 15 percent mark, which is like 15 pages into the story, basically. Um, and at that point, the main character, our overpowered hero who had a harem, is polymorphed into this inanimate object, the trash can. Only he, he's a specific kind of trash can with a sentience. Um, he's a recycler, and he's a special item class entity that can gain experience points level and then the RPG progression pass. Um, and from there on, after that 15 percent mark, it's actually a very entertaining story but you like i said me personally i i had to push past the harem stuff because it wasn't it's not really my thing and i would recommend if it's not as well but you still want to give this a try just skip right to the 15 percent mark like really that's that's where the the, the i think the, most of the really good fun rpg progress stuff happens anyways um the biggest draw for the story is definitely going to be its humor like i said the novel is Part of the description is, oh, it's a little RPG parody, and a lot of it is. It makes fun of harem stories, it makes fun of RPG progression, it makes fun of, and, and not in like a mean way, but I'm like, oh, you can give anything RPG progression, and it can still be kind of be interesting, and it's, and it's kind of true. Like you're you're literally reading about a trash can, who's re, uh, the recycler, who's taking in items and all kinds of weird and odd things, and doing crafting with them uh, for a lot of the story, and it's it, and it's still entertaining. I was still kind of entertained. And interjecting in that is is a lot of humor. Um, it, there's a it's it, it's very adult humor. I'm, I'm going to tell you that. So um, there's definitely some potty humor. There's a, plenty of sex humor, um, but a lot of like, other kind of jokes as well. Um, there are no graphic sex scenes in the story, but there are again there is sex jokes and there are adult humor. So just be aware of that. If that's not your thing at all, just don't pick this up. Uh, but if you know you can balance that and you're okay with that, I, I think you might you might find something very entertaining here. Um, there are, again, several, I, I keep saying this because I know it's going to be turned off for some people. Um, there are several scenes that just describe like sexuality stuff and fetishes and they're jokes. They really are. Um, but it is still there. So, okay. Um, the story again has a lot of interesting things, <laughs> including like, just like this weird crafting experience from a trash can. Um, and it literally, it, um, this is minorly really spoiler, but it's kind of a core theme that I thought was super fun and interesting. It's literally just taking a trash and different items and, and, and learns how to break them down and to do different crafting things. And it, and it incorporates that into an actual story where that makes sense and is interesting, but it's still told from that point of view of that trash can character. Uh, I think I said it's, it's, it's a little weird, um, but it is funny and it's interesting. And I, I liked it. I really did. Um, the end is a little bit forced, um, but it's kind of a minor issue. I thought overall the novel was still entertaining um, outside of that harem opening, which didn't really work for me. But again, it's also a one-time thing that you don't really see through the rest of the story anyway. So it's a very skippable aspect of it. Uh, for me though, entertaining stuff. It's a short story, so it's not that big of an investment uh, to read. It's like a hundred, over, little over 100 pages. Uh, so for me, I had a good time with it. Gets a score 7.4 out of 10 little like middle of the road like we're good um it's harem trash a lit rpg satire with the score 7.4 out of 10 how do you know with it and on to the galactic fist of legend book number four life works written by scotty fooch it is 384 sorry 348 pages two dollars 99 cents that is available on kindle limited and here's the author's description Fresh from the battle with the zombie mecha pilot and grad necromancer Waldo, Scott and his team take a much-needed uh, breather back at Hellspond. Of course, rest and relaxation are not allowed for long. Odd, old problems coupled with new possibilities join together to create a fantastic new ability that will reshape the very foundation of how he will play the game going forward. Even as the call to adventure draws him to his from his comfortable apartment and the life of harem related shenanigans a bigger threat looms in the distance galactic fist of legend is one of the several series of books that are part of the project scott universe one scott soul infinite possibilities cool guys hot video game babes epic boobery exploding lesbians and a battle against a dread cosmic entity known as global warming <laughs> come witness the spectacle Okay, and that kind of does summarize a lot of the points of the novel, also the kind of sense of humor that the author has in, in his writing. Um, and for me, it, it, if you like 
the other novels in this series, you're going to like this one. I should tell you, though, that this series is, in this novel, definitely um, veering a little bit away from, like, the, the, the bigger concepts in books one through three, and that's okay. It just it just goes in a different direction. There's a lot less zombie killing action in the story, um, and it, there's a definite reset of the main character's powers, um, and it continues the slice of life adventuring and parody humor that pulls in pop culture, anime, harem, no sex, um, and lots of video game references. It's fun. Um, not everybody is going to like the beginning harem aspects. It's not as interesting as other things in the story, but it, it still has a lot of really good things. Um, it's fun. It's not the most action-oriented in the novel series, but it's still very entertaining. Uh, for me, this is it's not my favorite in the series. Um, book one in the series is definitely the one that I enjoyed the most, um, but the this fourth book is still entertaining, just not as quite as much for me. Um, gets a good score so for me, um, 7.2 out of 10. I especially like the uh, anime dream sequence for one of the characters. That was very, very funny. Um, but again, just a little like sightless action. Um, it's, it, this novel honestly feels like it's a, it's kind of just this breather or this pause between like bigger storylines. It does kind of set up a new storyline potentially and like for books five and six or whatever the case is. Um, but this one is kind of a, a pause for like the major adventuring that has happened like through books one through three. Um, but it's still entertaining. Uh, it gets a score of 7.2 out of 10. Galactic Fist of Legend book number four, Life Works with a score of 7.2 out of 10. And that is it, everybody. And this is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, for listening, for watching. Uh, remember, you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our webpage at littlebittypodcast.com. And, of course, in our show notes links, we have a bunch of uh, links to other Little Bitty Facebook pages. Go check them out. Go, go. There are a lot of great places where, like, Little Bitty authors and readers all congregate and mix and make fun of each other and have a good time. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, of course, and you want to support us in any way, shape, or form, you can find out all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. But until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you again for just taking the time, for watching, for sharing, uh, for uh, for recommending stuff to me for read, to read. Um, and until we can hang out again, folks, remember to go read some Lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody.